I was working with a dealer in New York who would send me images of sarcophaguses that were up for auction. Finally, this one came. It was so worth the wait. We call her Liza, after Liza Minnelli. Hi Vogue, I'm Rick Owens and this is my place in Concordia, Italy. My factory is across the street and this is where I come to do my collections. In this space, I don't like living with a lot of things. I'm not very acquisitive, but the things that I do live with are very special to me and I'm going to show you around. Okay. I wouldn't call myself a collector, maybe more of an eliminator, but the few things that I have are probably things that I've wanted for a really long time. This is a George Means sculpture. He was a Belgian sculptor associated with the Viennese Secession. It's called Kneeling Youth, and it's a study, I believe, for a fountain that's encircled by these youths leaning over it. It's about introversion, introspection, narcissism. Well, this is my interpretation. I just like the mood that, that it creates. It's kind of severe and a little bit maudlin, a little bit melancholy, but also vaguely spiritual. When I am in Concordia, I am focused on creating. This is a period of rigor and this is a period of training and the gym takes up pretty much half the apartment. In any place that I've ever lived in, including Hollywood Boulevard, Los Angeles, I've always insulated and upholstered my spaces with army blankets, vintage army blankets. This is inspired by Joseph Boys, who was my first art hero when I went to art school. And he used army blankets as a symbol of protection and insulation and isolation. The army surplus store was where I would get my original fabrics. I would make clothes out of the duffel bags, out of blankets, out of parachute clothes. Since then, which must be like 30 years ago, every place I have, I cover with army blankets. When I work on interiors or furniture, I'm pretty much a reductivist. I don't think about domestic details that much. They feel a little fussy to me. So the domesticity in this apartment is pretty minimal. That's my closet. I don't have very many clothes. That's a little stack of t-shirts, a little stack of shorts for here, for the factory, for every day. And that's pretty much it. I always kind of like sticking to a decision. So when I pick an outfit, I'll pretty much stick to it for a couple of years. My clothing choices have evolved from Hollywood Boulevard. It's always been some kind of shorts and it just gradually changes over the years. Every collection, I just have 20 more shorts made and I just have little stacks of them everywhere. When I first put this place together seven years ago, I wanted Italian rationalism. I wanted something kind of monastic, something kind of severe. I like the classical tone of travertine interior sets. I like putting myself into that zone. I wanted some place that would be a blank space for me so I could get into a zone of putting a collection together. I might have overdone it. I put travertine everywhere I could. I put it on the walls, on the floor. I wanted a travertine box to work in, kind of like a cave, a travertine cave, something stone. I know that I wanted to live in stone. I've always been impressed by the skulls in Italian churches. This skull I got from a medical school auction years ago, and I use it as a memento mori, as a reminder that all is vanity, that one day my skull is gonna be on somebody else's desk. So seize the day, seize the moment. 
The pistols are from my father's collection. He was a very conservative, kind of stridently moralist who I had a <clears throat> difficult relationship with. We used to be horrified, mom and me, about having guns around the house, but now they are an affectionate reminder of him. And I like the association with the kneeling youth, with the gym in between, the vulnerability of youth, the vitality of the gym, and the resolution of the skull and the pistols. The terrace overlooks the factory right over there. I asked the gardeners or the landscape artists to never touch this garden. I wanted it as shaggy, as chaotic, as wild as possible. Oh, look at those. Beautiful. Shaggy. These chairs are by the Italian futurist artist Giacomo Balla. They're very severe and yet kind of fantastic at the same time. Giacomo Balla is usually a lot more colorful than this, so I was really lucky to find something so subdued. They are so uncomfortable. They're hard. The angle of the back, it's you have to sit so upright, so it feels like a church pew, a little bit punishing. I rarely sit in them, but I love them so much. And I've probably kind of knocked them off with my furniture collection to a certain extent. One of my favorite things that I do like to wear, even though I don't wear very many things, is this robe. I've indulged myself with this from my Spring Summer 17 collection. It is silk taffeta lined with a cotton pele ovo fabric. It is regal and cozy on a winter morning when I'm wandering around having coffee on the terrace. But my favorite object is this one. I was working with a dealer in New York who would send me images of sarcophaguses that were up for auction. And they were always a little bit too colorful and they always kind of looked a little fake to me. But anyway, finally this one came and so it was so worth the wait. We call her Liza, after Liza Minnelli. Space in this building became available a few years ago and we entered into an agreement to collaborate with the family that was running it and to turn it into an Owens Court bar. It is part canteen for our crew, our team that is in the factory right across the street. But it's also for the community. I mean, it's open to everybody. We've included furniture pieces from the Rick Owens Furniture Collection. We have bronze pieces from our accessories and home objects collection. And the pièce de résistance of this space is this mural by my daughter, Scarlet Rouge. This mural was inspired by the Larry Legaspi show that I had just done. I'd also put out a book on Larry Legaspi, and in the book, he talks about his fascination with the movie, Things to Come by H.G. Wells from the 1930s. This was a movie that um, independently, before I ever heard of Larry Legaspi, I had known about this movie and it inspired me too. And I asked Scarlett, my daughter, to reference it in these murals that she did for the showroom for that collection. I love the pop impact of it. They are gestural, quick, drippy, almost violent, reckless lines that give a certain energy to this space. I, I, I don't like a lot of decoration, but if you're gonna do a decoration, I want it to be as extravagant and as dramatic and as extreme as possible. And I think that's what this is. I've been working in this office for 20 years and I've never repainted it because I like the patina of all of the tape marks and all of the pencil marks of all of the collections that we've gone through. I like having that sense of memory. These pieces have been with me for a while. These are objects from our 
I guess, homeware collection. We have a bronze gourd vase and rock crystal goblets. I think of these as relics of the pieces that we do for the interiors. These could be futuristic or they could be ancient. I like that we're using the classical materials like bronze and rock crystal. Everything that I do is kind of a blend of the past and the futuristic so that they kind of create a retro futuristic aesthetic that I've been developing over the years. For several years, I have been collecting these Onagadori rooster feathers. They were bred originally in 17th century Japan. My father had a library in the basement full of Japanese art books. And I remember seeing watercolors, old watercolors of Onagadori roosters in those books. What's great about them is that the roosters themselves live on tall perches, which allows the feathers to be undisturbed and pristine. And over the years, I've been in contact with a farm in Japan that will send me the feathers that fall off. <laughs> and so I've collected a few and I'm hell bent on collecting as many as I can. And I like to have them around to remind myself of unlimited possibilities. I like to start from a clean slate every collection but these have stayed here. These have been here for close to 20 years. I had a fantasy of actually breeding them myself, but <laughs> that's not very practical. But you know, one day, maybe. Thank you, Vogue, for allowing me to share my world. Every day, I'm very grateful that I ended up here. Arrivederci.